As you may have heard by now, Nintendo's being sued by a company called Gamevice because the Switch's Joy-Con controllers look similar to its own tablet controller called the WikiPad. Gamevice wants to outright ban the Switch and get royalties on top of that. But do they even have a case, or can they be countersued by Nintendo and possibly another company? I'm no lawyer, but I have Google, which makes me an expert, so here's my take. Turkey's in the truck, roll the intro. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but the WikiPad does admittedly look similar to the Switch's Joy-Cons. But aside from appearance, the only other similarities the two have with each other is that the WikiPad attaches the phones and tablets so you can use physical buttons instead of a touchscreen, whereas the Joy-Cons only work with the Nintendo Switch and nothing else. To give Game Vice some credit, the WikiPad isn't too bad of an idea. The main reason I hate mobile games is due to the lack of physical buttons, so good job on that. But even though the Switch is a tablet, it isn't the same thing as a phone or any other tablets on the market for that matter. I mean, Bill Gates invented tablets in 2001 and he didn't try suing Steve Jobs for popularizing it nine years later. But then again, Microsoft wasn't desperate for relevance like Game Vice is. If Mad Cats can make these monstrosities they call controllers, then how can Nintendo not make a controller similar to the Wikipad even though it doesn't compete with anything else since it isn't compatible with anything besides the Switch? I mean, you didn't see N-Dog try to sue Sony over the PlayStation Move and look how blatant that was. In fact, don't the Wikipad pads directional buttons look awfully familiar to the D-pad? I know the D-pad's patent expired in 2005 and anyone can recreate that now, but it still shows audacity on the part of Game Vice since, if anything, they're copying Nintendo's original idea. I'm not sure whether or not Game Vice has a case, but since fans of FU Game Crew are some of society's finest members, I'd imagine plenty of lawyers are watching this video right now. So please do educate me in the comments below on how Wikipad would have a case against Nintendo while Sony was allowed to completely rip the Wii Remote off, or with how every company until 2005 basically had a D-pad. All I'm saying is that this looks more similar than this. I'm not trying to fanboy or anything, I just don't see a way Game Vice could actually win. But it's not surprising as to why they'd want to try. I'm sure somebody in the Game Vice camp convinced everybody that Nintendo stole their idea. And if that is indeed the case, then that's a dick move on your part, Nintendo. But I honestly don't think Nintendo would straight up steal another company's idea. Not because I don't think they're dicks, because they most certainly can be. But because if there's anything that they should copy or at least take inspiration from, it'd be Xbox Live or the PSN, which they claim to not even have looked at for ideas on how to run an online service. And I have no reason but to believe them with their own shoddy online service being all the proof you need. If you look at the Switch in comparison to the Wii U, it's not at all that far-fetched to believe that they'd come up with the Joy-Cons. People have been saying for years that Nintendo should make a portable hybrid console, so really, what other way is there to accomplish this? Seeing as how the Wikipad was released in 2016, I'm surprised I've never heard about it until now. I mean, you'd think that Game Vice would have sued Nintendo last September when the Switch was first announced. It's a weird coincidence that they'd wait until the Switch is wildly successful to try to sue the above average size then. Surely somebody in Game Vice's camp thinks it's possible to get something out of this or else it'd be a waste of time and money. And I don't even need to make a should you buy it on that. Actually, that'd be a pretty good episode. Anyway, I'm sure that Game Vice doesn't actually believe that Nintendo will take the Switch off the market. In fact, I'd guess that money is just a bonus and not even their real goal out of all this. Up until a few days ago, did you have any idea what the Wikipad was? I'm sure there's fewer people out there that know what a Wikipad is than even the Wii U. And sadly, that's not even an exaggeration. Otherwise, how has nobody made this comparison before now? I'm sure that Game Vice is just trying to get some potentially easy money from a settlement, but even if they lose, just look at all the publicity they've gotten even in just a few days. There's videos all over the place left and right talking about the Wikipad. So even if the lawsuit gets dropped, Wikipad's already gotten tons of publicity, but it's unlikely that Game Vice will actually win against Nintendo. N-Dog's been winning legal battles for a long time now. Back when they were a small company, Nintendo beat Universal in a lawsuit who tried bullying them over the use of the name Kong. Needless to say, Nintendo won, otherwise this lady on Jeopardy would have been correct. Come to think of it, maybe she works for Universal. On a side note though, it's funny how Universal and Nintendo put their differences aside after 30 years to collaborate on Nintendo Land. There was also that other time where John R. Martin tried suing Nintendo over the original DS's use of a touchscreen. And then after that, Tomita Technologies tried suing Nintendo over the 3D technology in the 3DS. But my point is that Nintendo isn't new to dealing with lawsuits from people trying to capitalize off their success. Game Vice's Wikipad drama isn't the first time and probably won't be the last time N-Dog has to deal with litigation. If this were the 1970s, Game Vice would probably have a chance at winning since the creator of Casey Munchkin somehow lost a lawsuit against Atari for their game looking too similar to Pac-Man. Imagine if things flew that way these days. Anyway, my final thoughts on the matter are that Game Vice has no chance of winning since Nintendo's legal team surely made sure everything was legally in the clear before releasing the Switch. But if Game Vice is lucky, they might get some 10% off coupons to Shonies or something in a settlement. And at the very least, people know what the Wikipad is now. They just better hope Nintendo doesn't try countersuing them for wasting their time and money. But then again, Game Vice could counter-countersue Nintendo for the likes of Steel 
Diver and Federation forces being an even bigger waste of time than money. I mean, am I right? And one last piece of legal advice that I'll offer Game Vice is that they better tread lightly when stepping on other companies' toes before they themselves get sued by Fleshly Pad. Because if you ask me, the wiki pad looks awfully familiar to this particular game controller. Now, not that I know from experience or anything. <laughs> I just held onto it for a friend. And don't worry, I, I barely even used it. What do you think, though? Does Game Vice have a chance in this lawsuit, or are they just trying to gain some attention? As always, let me know in the comments below, and I'll converse with you there. Don't forget to like and share this video, and subscribe if you're new. This is Cameron, and I'll see you next fiscal year. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.